Right, so today we're going to do something a little different. This is a static grass applicator I made, and now we're going to upgrade the living crap out of it. And to do that, we're going to be using this stuff. So, first we have a 20 kilovolt negative ion generator. This will be used to create the static charge. Then in here we have a voltage boost converter. The generator is 12 volt, the battery I've got is 3.7 volt I think. And we also have a lithium charge circuit to charge the battery obviously. And we're going to try and cram all of that crap into the handle of this thing. So let's see how it goes. First a test. This is Woodland Scenics 2 and 4 mil grass, and as you can see, I need to get it very close. It doesn't create a very big static field. It's only about three and a half thousand volt. It works, but it's not great. So yeah, you can see 2 and 4 mil static grass. It'll work fine. The stuff I've got is 6 mil. It does not work. It doesn't stand up very well, and it takes forever to do big areas. So let's upgrade the ever living shit out of this thing. Right. So as you can see, obviously I've already been in this. Now the battery that's in this isn't a lithium battery, it's a lead acid battery I'm pretty sure, but I will change it out to a lithium battery. Um, it's basic, it uses a transformer, it was just a bug zapper, and it works, but big areas doesn't work, long grass doesn't work. Now you can see transformer, diodes, yada yada yada. Not bad, but needs an upgrade. Now, fitment. Let's see where everything goes. Um, this was not too difficult, but it was a little bit difficult with the voltage converter. I didn't know exactly where I put it. I didn't want to put it where I ended up putting it. Um, but this is just a test. I'm going to be using this for the Sabrina diorama. And then after that, I will probably design a handle that can be 3D printed that will fit all of this in with an 18650 lithium cell. So it should work pretty well, but at the moment it's just trying to cram everything into this handle. And after a while, I did end up getting it all together. It looks but ugly, like a pig with lipstick, but it'll work. Now, I did have to put the voltage um, converter underneath the ion generator. I didn't really want to do that because it's obviously high voltage and there's a heatsink under there that could short something, but it was the only place for it. So, as you can see, everything was in there. But you can see why I didn't want the voltage converter under there. There's a heat sink, there's a potentiometer, uh, too much for it to short on. Plus, with it being near the high voltage, I don't know what it's going to do to the voltage converter itself. We will have to see. It should be okay because it's all potted in resin, but it's not the ideal place for it. You want to try and keep that away from it. And yeah, as you can see, the edges are rough as hell, they're ugly. But again, this is just a test to make sure it actually works. Now on to the electronics. I'm using a connector for the battery. Again, um, there's a good reason for it, you'll see later. And for anyone wondering what solder I'm using, it's a 6337, uh, like a bit better than the 6040, and it's lead based, none of that lead free crap. And always remember to cut the extra off, otherwise you, you fucking stab yourself. And if you're like me, you usually stab yourself under your nail, which is always fun. And we're done. Uh, trim off all the extra, and look at those pretty solder joints. Oh yeah. Now just hooking this up to the boost converter. Um, you'll notice I don't have the button on it yet. Yeah, I'm using that TS100 soldering iron. But you'll notice that I don't have the um, on-off button for this. I kind of forgot about it and didn't record it. Ideally you want the on-off button in the switch just to make sure that there's no power running through this thing and I'll explain why later. Now to test to make sure that everything's working and it's getting 12 volt out, which it pretty much is, so that's that. And that's the system. So that's the battery into the charge circuit, out to a button, to the voltage converter, to the negative ion generator. Now the reason I have the button is because you don't want this thing running all, all the time and you really don't want to switch, especially with something this powerful. Now for the fun part, does it work? 
Ooh, sparks. It does work. Hang on a second. Pretty darn sticky finger in this. It fucking hurts, as I found. And now on to final assembly. We're going to be using a bunch of hot snot. My hot glue is yellow because I've had it for years. Um, I'm not going to bore you with all of this. Uh, I'm just going to skip through most of it. But you see, I took out a couple of chunks around the edge of the um, casing for the generator so the wires will sit in and it'll sit relatively flat. It also gives a little bit of strain relief. Not as good as an actual screw, but it'll do for now. You can also see with the voltage converter, I had to put captain tape around it to make sure that it didn't short out on the heatsink, and it's also just taped in place, it's not actually glued. Okay, safety warning. Now, I've watched a lot of other videos of people building these, and they say that you've got to be careful with them, but they don't actually tell you how or why, so I'm going to attempt to do that in this video. Now, this is a 20 kilovolt negative ion generator. It's 5 watt, which means it's roughly 4 milliamp. It's not that powerful, but you can still get one hell of a shock off it, which is why I recommend that you have a push button, a tactile push button, that doesn't latch, just a momentary switch, and ideally you would have a proper um, on-off switch to turn the power completely off so you couldn't accidentally push the button. I don't have that. That's why I've just got the battery connectors hanging out, so I can just unplug it and plug it in. But ideally you would want a push button to activate it and make sure it's far enough away that you can't touch each connector. Now, with the connectors, you don't want to be touching the positive and the negative in different hands. Uh, the reason being is it will put the shock across your chest, which is one thing you really want to avoid with any kind of electronics, doesn't matter if it's DC or AC, you don't want power going across your chest. That's why the power button, have it as far back as you can so you can't accidentally touch the positive and the negative with different hands. If you just accidentally zap your finger, if you have your finger on there and you zap it, it's going to hurt like hell, it'll probably go up your arm a little bit, but it shouldn't really do much to you. And trust me, it does hurt, but holding them in each hand, you don't want to do that at all. Now the test. Does it actually work? Let's see. Well, of course it works. Um, you can see that I'm as close as I was with the other one, but you can also see that the grass really hangs on. This thing produces a big static field, so you also kind of want to be careful when you've got cameras or anything around. If you get it too close, it could possibly affect them. It shouldn't kill them, but it might affect them. So yes, done, and it works. Now, this is a safety thing. I also couldn't fit it in the case, but I don't want the battery plugged in when the button can accidentally be pressed. I need to put it in a proper switch. Um, it's also ugly as shit, but let's just call it a prototype for now and be done with it. Yeah. Now, you need to be careful with this thing. It does hold quite a charge for quite a long time. Even when it's off, you turn everything off, you unplug the battery, turn it off by the switch, whatever, it will hold a charge and you will get zapped. Every time you finish using it, turn it off, hold off the button, and then short it. That'll discharge everything. So yeah, like I said, we'll call this a prototype. In the future, I may design a 3D printed version, but we'll see. I'm not that great at designing things. I'm also not sure how long the battery will last. Not ages, but it should be long enough for most stuff, hopefully. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to, like, comment, you know, the whiny YouTube drill. Anyway, so.